Hi, I'm John Pettuccino, Professor of Astronomy at College of the Redwoods. This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class, from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So let's talk about the seasons. The seasons on Earth are created by the tilt of the Earth's axis. As we discussed, I'm sure many of you could have thrown that out right off the bat. The tilt of the Earth's axis creates the seasons. But how does that work? First, let's remind ourselves what is the tilt of the Earth's axis. At this point in time when we live, it's about 23 and a half degrees. I make that point because it varies between 22 and a half and 24 and a half degrees over the course of thousands of years. So, 23 and a half degree tilt creates a change in the angle of the sun. And that change in the angle of the sun in the sky is what manifests itself as the seasons. It means more intense sun during the summer when the sun is higher and less intense sun in the winter, leading to higher temperatures in the summer and lower temperatures in the winter for most folks, and for longer days in the summer as the sun rises not easterly but northeasterly, gets high in the sky and sets in the northwest. Whereas in the winter, the sun will rise in the southeast and set in the southwest. That is a result of the fact that the Earth's axis is tilted with respect to the sun. To use a high-tech demo, if this is the sun and this is the Earth, we tilt in towards the sun during the summer, and as the Earth revolves around the sun, that puts us in a position of the winter and of course, I'm talking from a northern hemisphere centric view. This is northern summer and northern winter. Therefore, if the sun is high in the summer, we're leaning in towards the sun. It's low in the winter, we're leaning away from the sun by 23 and a half degrees during each season. That tells us that the sun varies approximately 47 degrees from its highest point in the summer to its lowest point in the winter. We mark those positions on the Earth's orbit around the Sun by calling them solstices and equinoxes. Let's sketch those up. If this is the Sun, and this is the Earth's orbit around the Sun, here is the Earth. Let's start here. We're going to lean the Earth in towards the Sun. So if this is the Earth's axis of rotation, okay? In fact, we'll make that red so it stands out. This is the Earth's axis of rotation. We're tilted in towards the sun by a total of 23 and a half degrees. That means the sun's going to be high, and this is the northern summer. Of course, the seasons are opposite in the southern hemisphere. This is southern winter. Let me take one moment to point out that you might ask yourself, well, what's going to happen if we had a lesser tilt or no tilt at all? In fact, if there were no tilt to the Earth's axis, there would be no vari variation between the high in the summer and the low in the winter, and there would be no seasons. A smaller tilt than 23 and a half degrees would make lesser seasons, and a greater tilt like that found on the planet Mars with 25 degrees, or in the extreme, the planet Uranus with approximately 90 degree tilt would create extreme seasons. But for the Earth, it's 23 and a half degrees. This represents in the northern hemisphere, northern summer, also known as the summer solstice. The date for the summer solstice, June 21st. You should note that June 21st is also the winter solstice for people in the southern hemisphere. They are tilted away from the sun, and so their shortest day of the year is in fact June 21st. So holidays that we associated with summer they associate with winter. It can make for a problem during the Olympics, as we just had them in the Southern Hemisphere. Moving on, let's go to the other extreme. Again, the Earth's axis is tilted 23 and a half degrees away from the Sun in this axis. That means this is northern winter. And so northern winter represents the winter solstice. Again, another extreme to the sun's position. Look at the word solstice, sol, like solar. The winter solstice takes place in December 21st, and that is the shortest day of the year for folks in the Northern Hemisphere. It's the longest day of the year, December 21st, 
for people in the Southern Hemisphere. And then what about our other options when we're here or when we're there? The tilt is still the same. And so those are what are called the equinoxes. So as you move June, July, August, September, September 22nd, does the tilt of the Earth's axis matter in this configuration? Not really. Okay, not really. It doesn't really matter that we have a tilt. So what we've got is not a long summer day or a short winter day, but something exactly in between. We call that, for everybody on Earth, an equinox. Again, look at the name, equinox, equal night. Equal day and equal night, September 22nd. For us, it's the first day of fall. We call that the autumnal equinox. And then as we zoom back around, we come into March 20th. Remember, the months aren't all the same length, so it happens to vary a little bit. It's March 20th, not 21st. And March 20th is the first day of spring for us in the Northern Hemisphere, the first day of fall in the Southern Hemisphere. That is called the vernal, which is, refers to the word vernal, refers to greening, the spring, the spring equinox. So again, what causes the seasons? The tilt of the Earth's axis. The days vary from being quite long in the summer to being quite short in the winter and that varies the intensity of the sun as well. We also recognize that the sun can vary then 23 and a half degrees on the high side and 23 and a half degrees on the low side. So if we were to chart the path of the sun over the course of the year, we would call that path, as we did in lecture, the ecliptic, the path of the sun over the course of the year. So as the sun passes over the course of the year, if this is the average, the sun is high in the summer, and low in the winter. June 21st, the summer solstice. December 21st, the winter solstice, and everything in between. September 22nd, which for us is the autumnal equinox, and March 20th, which for us is the vernal equinox. The sun varies 23 and a half degrees on the plus side, and 23 and a half degrees on the minus side of some average number. This is called the ecliptic, the path of the sun over the course of the year. I'm not saying that the sun goes like this over the course of the year, or the course of a day. I'm saying that over the course of the year, if you chart the path of the sun, it is high in the summer, medium in the fall, low in the winter, and then on back to average in the spring. Does anyone want to guess what this middle number is? That's right. That number is the celestial equator. So this thing right here, this medium zone, is the celestial equator. The celestial equator is, if you remember from earlier discussion, zero degrees of declination. So if someone asks you, what's the declination of the sun on September 22nd? The answer, about zero degrees. What's the declination of the sun on March 20th? About zero degrees. What about June 21st? Plus 23 and a half degrees. And on December 21st, minus 23 and a half degrees. Now, if you want to go to the next level, where is that in our sky? That's a little more complicated question, but recognizing that the celestial equator sits somewhere in our sky and the sun varies 23 and a half degrees above and 23 and a half degrees below that average number.